I often get asked questions like, which is the best programming language out there? Is Python better than Java? Is PHP still relevant? In this particular video, we're going to address those questions and try to answer them. We'll have a look at the top 20 programming languages as per the TIOB index, which is actually a measurement of the uh, popularity of the languages. And we are also going to look at a simple hello world program in each of them. So let's start. Hey there guys, how's it going? Uh, this is AB this side and I'm an upcoming software engineer at Oracle and a final year undergraduate in, from the Department of Maths and Computing, IIT Guwahati. Uh, in this channel, we mostly do tutorials and uh, fundamentals. So fundamentals are those videos in which you actually discuss concepts and tutorials are those where we, uh, you know, code up applications or websites and uh, implement those concepts. Uh, starting from this video, we'll be introducing a new type of uh, content on this channel, which I am calling Explorations, in which we'll basically go ahead and explore uh, our software development industry as a whole, and also discuss about new or current trends in the industry. Uh, so basically talking about the TIOB index, it's actually a measure of the popularity of programming languages. Uh, so it's important to note that uh, the TIOB index does not specify if a language is better than the other. We cannot say that. Uh, but if we have a look at the TIOB index, uh, we see that these are the top 20 languages uh, uh, as per the index uh, for the month of February 2022, we start with Python, then move on to C, Java, and then finally ended Groovy. So uh, in this video, we are going to talk about all of these languages. Uh, I would also like to mention that the TIOB index uh, is actually a measure of popularity, which is uh, judged on the basis of the following things. It's actually on the number of skilled workers or the skilled engineers for that particular language or it's actually based on the number of companies using those uh, languages in their softwares or it can also be uh, you know for the number of courses out there for these languages uh, it's not dependent on how many lines of code has been written in these languages or if it's the most used language on github or somewhere else like that and uh, the, the index will help you understand if actually uh, your programming skills are up to the mark and if you are staying updated with time and also if you have multiple languages uh, which you are struggling to uh, select from uh, for your next big project then you can actually get a fair idea of which language is better or is trending in the market uh, so other than that if i asked you about your first program in each, in any programming language then I'm sure you'd say that it would be the Hello World program. Uh, so we'd also have a look at uh, a basic Hello World program in each of these languages to give you a sense of, you know, understanding the basics of the language. Uh, I'm really excited uh, to see what's in the video. So the very first language that we'll have a look at is Python, uh, which was released back in 1991. It's an interpreted high level programming language uh, and uh, it is based on the philosophy of code readability and significant indentation. Uh, we all know that Python code is uh, very easy and simple to understand and write. Uh, Python finds a lot of uh, usage. Uh, the first thing that comes to your mind is the machine learning and the artificial intelligence field. Uh, but it also uh, with several frameworks like uh, Django, uh, Flask, uh, Fast API and numerous others, uh, it finds usage in, the, in designing complex web, applica web applications as well. Uh, and this is how a simple hello world program looks in Python. Uh, so as you can see, we just have one print statement and uh, we have hello world in it. The next thing that we'll have a look at is C. Now C uh, is a very old language uh, and it was first released in 1972. It's a compiled imperative programming language which was uh, basically developed to do system programming on the operating system Unix. Now, uh, C has a unique design uh, because of which programs run very fast as compared to other languages. And that is because uh, it's actually developed keeping the operating system architecture in mind. And, uh, uh, and then it is very helpful in writing uh, uh, operating systems or in actually writing embedded system applications. Uh, now, this is how a sample uh, program looks in case of C. Uh, we have a main function, then we have the print if statement uh, where we insert our hello world. Uh, and uh, then moving on, uh, we can actually have a look at Java. Java is one of the most popular languages out there. And uh, Java was released in 1995. 
it's a high level class based object oriented programming language uh, perhaps the best thing uh, or the uh, most uh, uh, advertisable thing that java had uh, was write once run anywhere which means that the java compiled uh, uh, the compiled code of java was machine independent uh, and uh, gui applications web servers middlewares enterprises uh, all of them uh, make use of java uh, and uh, a sample hello world program in java looks like this we have a class we have a main function and then we make use of the print talents uh, function inside system.out to print hello world on screen then we have c++ if you remember c was released uh, back in 1972 and c++ is released in 1985 as an extension to c uh, with oops uh, generic and functional features and also uh, low level memory uh, manipulation now uh, c++ was designed with an orientation towards system programming uh, and also for resource constrained uh, and large software systems now it has been very useful in developing desktop applications video games or working with servers now a sample c++ program looks like this we have uh, uh, a main function again and now you're using the c out uh, to actually print the hello world onto a console uh, c++ is also one of the most popular choices if you go with data structures and algorithms now we have uh, c sharp next it was released uh, in 2000 it's a general purpose multi-paradigm programming language uh, it encompasses a lot of features uh, some of which are static typing strong typing uh, lexically scoped imperative declarative functional generic object oriented programming and also component wise uh, object oriented programming disciplines now it has prime uh, primarily found usage in windows applications games uh, and web applications uh, now a sample c uh, sharp program looks like this you have a class name and you have your main method uh, if you go back in perspective it's look uh, it looks very similar to the uh, java program as well now visual basic.net it was released in 2002 as a successor to the classic visual basic that was introduced by microsoft uh, and uh, the classic visual basic was then actually uh, termed as legacy uh, although we will still see it uh, it's in the list of the top 20 programming languages now, uh, this is very useful uh, in making Windows desktop applications uh, along with Windows Forms GUI uh, and it is implemented with uh, on .NET Mono and the .NET framework. A sample program in the case of this uh, looks like uh, uh, this as you see on the screen uh, and uh, we have write line uh, functions inside console and then we are waiting for uh, the user to press a, uh, and enter key and then the program exits. Uh, so moving on we have a very popular uh, language uh, uh, these days which is javascript now notice that javascript is also released in 1995 and as you will notice that several of the other languages were also published uh, uh, in around the same area so a new language is not necessarily popular or an old language is not necessarily legacy it's actually uh, based on their use cases and how the technology is evolving that one language might uh, be used more as compared to others uh, now javascript is a programming language that is uh, one of the most core technologies of the world wide web alongside html and uh, css and over 97 percentage of the websites use this for client side web behavior now browsers have engines for example chrome has the v8 engine uh, and they also provide apis for input output with javascript now originally it was designed for the web but now javascript with the help of various frameworks we have uh, let's say react native we have react js uh, and uh, we also have node.js it's actually being used for more than just the client website uh, we are also making it uh, in use for servers we are putting it to use for making mobile application desktop applications hybrid applications uh, and uh, that is javascript for you and a sample hello world program in this case looks like this we have a console and uh, then we are logging this actually so since it's not a program that can be compiled it's actually uh, sort of a run in the browser using the javascript engines so that is how the hello world program will look like now php again released in 1995 uh, it's it's very famous uh, for uh, building web applications uh, it's a general purpose scripting language geared towards web development now it's actually processed by a php interpreter uh, and implemented as a module a daemon or a uh, cgi executable now outside of web context php also finds usage in graphical applications and in robotic drones 
uh, and this is how a sample uh, hello world program looks in this case uh, next we have the assembly language which is perhaps the oldest language to exist it was uh, first released in 1949 now, assembly is a low-level programming language which sets it apart from the other programming languages uh, that we have seen so far. So, uh, it means that there is a very significant co correspondence between the assembly language and uh, the machine code instructions. Uh, so, and that also means that the assembly language will be machine dependent since uh, assembly depends on the machine code instructions uh, and the assembly language is specific to a particular computer architecture. Now, its usage uh, actually is debatable, but uh, whenever we are uh, building something that needs to interact efficiently with hardware, then assembly language may be a great choice for you. Uh, now, uh, if you have a look at the Hello World program, it looks very strange to you since it's a low level language. Uh, but we do have statements like move, uh, which is basically uh, understandable that we are dealing with pieces of memory. And then we have a message statement uh, where we are printing out uh, the Hello World. And next we have uh, uh, SQL, which was first released in 1974. Uh, it came off from a research paper on, on relational database management. And it was actually, uh, it's a domain specific language which is used in programming and designed for managing the data, which is held in a relative database management system. Uh, now, it's originally based on relational algebra and tuple relational calculus, and SQL consists of several types of statements uh, in it. Now, uh, standard SQL also has several extensions to it. So you must have heard terms like MySQL or Oracle or MariaDB. So uh, there are actually uh, extensions to the standard SQL that add some procedural programming language functionality to it. So a sample program in this case would look something like this. Now this is not a programming language per se, so we don't have you know all those functions and methods. It's more like querying from the database. But you can also use the put line uh, on of DVMS output to uh, show the hello world uh, on the screen. Uh, and then we have the Go language. So it's actually developed by Google and it's a statically typed compiled programming language. Uh, it is very similar to C when we talk about syntax, but it has some features like memory safety, garbage collection, structural typing and CSV style concurrency. Now Go is very uh, popularly used in server side or cloud based applications, uh, but it's also used in CLI tools and in DevOps. Uh, and this looks similar to see if you look at the hello world program you have a main function and you're using the println function inside fmt which are importing uh, so that's really actually similar to see as well uh, in terms of syntax next we look at swift uh, i'm sure you have heard of swift uh, it's the apple's uh, choice of uh, building uh, all the ios mac os watch os tv os applications so earlier apple used to work on uh, objective c but then from 2014 it shifted to swift uh, which is a general purpose multi-paradigm compiled programming language and uh, swift is very easy to understand uh, read and write and uh, uh, that's why uh, the adoption and again we have a simple uh, hello world program for this as well with just using the print statement Next, we'll look at two programming languages, which are very, uh, you know, languages which are very efficient in data hand handling, analysis, uh, data mining, and uh, thus very popular among data analysts, statisticians, or scientists. So we have uh, the R programming language released in 1993. It was primarily written in C and Fortran, and it's uh, used for data mining and data analysis and also for development of statistical software. Now, uh, we have also packages which perform specific type of data handling uh, and they have been written by several users. Uh, so that's one more feature to the R language. Uh, and this is how the sample Hello World program looks. Uh, you note that the code equals false ensures that the code around the Hello World is not printed in the console. Uh, then we have MATLAB, another yet another uh, programming language uh, and numeric computing environment, it, which is developed and maintained by MathWorks. Now, MATLAB allows you to do very complex calculations, matrix manipulations, or you know, plotting of functions and data and all that. So, any student who is or any undergrad student actually uh, who has some course on mathematics is very likely to come across MATLAB at some point of time. And uh, it actually is very efficient in handling all this uh, complex stuff and uh, calculations and algorithms. So uh, a sample hello world program looks like this. We have the display uh, statement uh, and the display hello world statement basically. 
Then we look at Delphi. So it was released in 1995, which is a general purpose programming language. And it's a software product that uses the Delphi dialect of the object Pascal programming language. So uh, it provides an ID for rapid application development of desktop, mobile, web and console software. Uh, and if we have a look at the hello world program, uh, it looks something similar to this. We have a write line function that has the uh, hello world 10 in it and we have a begin and end. So uh, yeah, and next we can move on to Ruby. Now I'm sure you have heard the term Ruby uh, in context of Ruby on Rails, uh, where Rails is actually uh, a backend uh, a language which is used for making the backend. Uh, and Ruby is the programming language uh, which is high level uh, interpreted and it's a general purpose programming language. It supports uh, multiple programming paradigms as well. Now it was designed with the emphasis of programming productivity and simplicity and everything inside Ruby is actually object including the primitive data types. Now Ruby is great for building websites of course but it's also useful in building desktop applications, uh, data processing services and even automation tools. A sample hello world program in Ruby is simple as we talked about it earlier and it just makes use of the put statement and it shows the hello world there. Now classic visual basic is something we have already come to before and we'll also see our objective C next. Now it was stopped uh, in 2008, it was declared as legacy uh, but still it is popular to date and we can build GUIs with it and uh, connect to databases. Now uh, this is how a hello world program uh, Hello World program looks in uh, classic Visual Basic. Now Objective-C released in 1984, this is also uh, quite old. Uh, we have Objective-C uh, was used by Apple for developing Mac OS and iOS applications until the introduction of Swift in 2014. Now it is, as the name suggests, uh, a sort of related to C and it adds uh, some more features to C. Now we have seen several languages that do this, right? They add features to C and develop some different flavor of uh, language. So that is rightly why C is uh, even called a mother of all languages because several languages have taken their inspirations or even, you know, based uh, are based on C. Now uh, Objective-C is another such example that we have. Uh, and also the program here looks uh, similar to see if you notice. Now we have an import statement uh, that is importing foundation dot uh, header file. And then we have a main function where we are uh, basically printing the hello world. Next we move on to Perl. First released in 1988. Uh, and it's actually uh, a family of two high level general purpose interpreted dynamic programming languages. Uh, Perl 5 and Perl 6. Now Perl 6 is the latest version which has been renamed uh, but uh, the reason why Perl 5 gained popularity in the 90s is because it had these powerful regular expression and string parsing abilities uh, which is why it was used as a CGI scripting language and additionally it also finds use in system administration and network programming. And this is how, is, uh, how a sample hello world program looks for Perl. Uh, we have a print hello world statement in there. And then the last in the list of 20 languages, we have Groovy. Apache Groovy is a Java syntax compatible uh, object oriented programming language for the Java platform. Now Groovy is both static and dynamic language with features similar to those of Python, Ruby and Smalltalk. Now it is used as both for programming and scripting language for the Java platform. Uh, a sample hello world program in this case uh, looks like this. We have the print ln and then we have uh, hello world basically. So I hope I was able to give you some insights on the top 20 programming languages. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Comment on your favorite programming language. I would really love to know that. In the next video, we are going to uh, explore some of the AI services of Google Cloud. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And from Google, I remember I have a video on Flutter. Uh, where I talk about uh, securing your Flutter applications in five steps. Uh, go ahead and watch that. It also has a great number of reads on Medium. So I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Uh, and uh, I will see you in the next video.